Hey, what's up guys? I'm Praetorian and welcome back to Europa Universe House 4 as we are playing as Milan in the Emperor expansion. So you notice this video uh, is a bit, a little bit late. It's about a day late. Uh, we didn't have a video for the series on Friday, uh, or Friday morning, like we would typically do. Uh, and that's because we're going to be having a little bit different schedule over the next couple days, guys. Uh, and I just wanted to put this out here in the beginning of the episode so you guys are aware. Uh, so Father's Day is on Sunday. Uh, and, you know, you know, happy Father's Day to any of you fathers who happen to be watching. Uh, I myself have two kids, if you didn't know that. Uh, if you're new to the channel, uh, I have two kids, a 10-year-old daughter and an 8-year-old son. And uh, I do have to work on Sunday. I work every Sunday. I work all day and all night on Sundays. And unfortunately, I wasn't able to get it off. That does mean that uh, we're going to celebrate Father's Day on Saturday here in our house. Now, we don't typically make like a big deal of like Mother's Day and Father's Day. You know, the you know, kids usually get us some, some gifts or whatever. And then you you get to pick what you want to eat for dinner that, that night. So we don't typically make a big deal out of it. However, this year has been a little bit different, as many of you guys are, have experienced yourselves. Uh, this has been a rough year, uh, and particularly in the parenting field, you know, our kids have been home since March, uh, you know, ever since they got, you know, out of school from the, the coronavirus. So we, uh, yeah, we've been, you know, doing all the homeschooling, essentially. Uh, the Man, school was rough last semester, you know, because we had to do, uh, it was kind of like a form of homeschooling, essentially. Uh, you know, they had like a program and, and like videos and stuff and there was a lot to it and it was a, a lot of work um, A lot more than you know, it typically is uh, where you just help help your kids with their homework when they get home from school uh, So because of that because of all the extra work and just the craziness that this year has been and you know, it's obviously not better now I'd say it's a lot worse here uh, Here this summer than it was last spring uh, not just with COVID-19 but just everything else that's going around the country and just so happens that this Father's Day is also the week that Last of Us 2 releases uh, I was a massive fan of the first Last of Us uh, it's probably still even all these years later my favorite game of all time uh, the story was amazing the gameplay was great uh, characters were awesome uh, absolutely love the Last of Us game is one of the few games that I bought twice on two different consoles you know both for PS3 and PS4 so I'm a big fan of it, and I've been looking forward to the sequel for a while now. Uh, so I'm really, really excited for it. Uh, again, it just looks so amazing. So it happens that that release is on Father's Day. So what my Father's Day wish was, which they do have some gifts for me too, which you know I don't know what they are, but one did come in the mail the other day. Uh, we had a package outside, and it was kind of big. So I'm excited to see what that gift is. Uh, but my, my main thing that I wanted was uh, to just have a day. Uh, where I, I come here in the office, you know, we have we close the door, you know, because you know, obviously Last of Us 2 is about as far away from a, a child-appropriate game as it gets. Uh, so, you know, close the door so you know, kids won't be able to see or hear the game, uh, and then just sit in here and play the game all day. That's what I wanted, was to just, I haven't done that, uh, I don't know, a long, long time, uh, since, since I was back in college, uh, which, you know, I did go to college a little bit later than most people do. I was in my uh, mid-20s when I did college. And that was probably the last time that I was able to just like play a game all day. Uh, so I, I don't really even game very much at all outside of what I play here on the channel. Uh, so I really miss just being able to just sit and play a video game all day. So that's what I, I really wanted to do. Just take The Last of Us and then play it all day on Saturday and try and get as far as I can get. Because uh, with my current gaming schedule, uh, it takes me about three to six months to complete a game uh, typically because I just don't play very often. I'll play like an hour a week or something like that. Uh, and maybe not, and then I'll go like weeks without playing the game, and then I don't remember what the hell I was doing or how to play. I just don't game very much anymore outside of what we do for the channel, just because I just don't have the time. Uh, the, the channel has become incredibly time consuming uh, as it's gotten larger, and then of course working, and then you know obviously with the kids being home so long, we're still homeschooling them ourselves, uh, despite the fact that it's now summer and they don't need to do it. Uh, we've got uh, a little program that we're running ourselves. I'm teaching them. Uh, I'm focusing on like history, social studies, uh, histories, uh, government. American government spe specifically right now maybe we'll move into uh, European government which I actually do have a lot of knowledge of my uh, political science degree focused on political thought which is ideologies however uh, I did uh, study European governments as kind of a little side thing so maybe we'll move into that a little bit I know you guys don't care about that I know this is kind of getting to become a long intro sorry about that uh, I get sidetracked easily uh, but anyways uh, you know I'm, I'm you know trying to get my kids educated on stuff that our schools uh, here in America, uh, sorely neglect. So yeah, with everything, just don't have a lot of time, man, uh, to, to game. And so that's what I wanted this year, is to just be able to 
play some Last of Us 2 on Saturday. Uh, so I don't want to record anything. I don't want to put any videos out. I don't want to do any work. I don't want to do. I don't want to do anything, man. Uh, I am going to go to the gym on Saturday uh, because the schedule dictates so. But that's it. That's it. Uh, and I don't want to do anything else. And so because of that, uh, the schedule is going to be a little bit different. Uh, because I had to record one more video for the Strategic Mine uh, Blitzkrieg series, uh, one more video than I was expecting. Uh, I thought that series uh, would be done. I thought the uh, invasion in Norway. Would have only been three episodes, but unfortunately, it did take four videos. Uh, so because of that, we put that out on Friday. So that'll be the Friday video that I got out, and that's all I had time to do. Uh, and then you know this one would be on on Saturday, uh, which I'm going to put out Saturday morning before I go to sleep. There will not be a video on Sunday. Uh, I probably not one on Monday. Maybe I could record a short short one the way I did for that Monday episode on the first weekend that the series started. Maybe I could do a little short one on Monday, record it on Monday, put it out Monday night. I can't promise anything. We'll see you guys. We'll see if I have time or not. Uh, but yeah, that's that's how this is, this weekend is going to go. Uh, so we're not going to have it, any other videos uh, until at least Monday night or, or Tuesday in this series. It was already a long intro. Let's go ahead and, and jump into it, guys. Uh, we left off at war with Naples here, and we have finished the war. Uh, but because we are worried about aggressive expansion, which is still fairly high, and... Uh, I think it was Luca here is incredibly expensive because we didn't call them in as a belligerent. We do have a claim here. We have a we had a claim on Sienna too. I think somebody thought we didn't have one, uh, but I'm pretty sure we did have a claim on Sienna if I'm not mistaken. Uh, yeah, we did. Uh, we checked that beforehand. So yeah, the reason why that one is costly, of course, is because of the development too. The development's pretty high in these, uh, so it's costing us a lot of aggressive expansion. So we're just waiting to burn it off. Uh, so let's go and let this roll. And keep declining that royal marriage. Oh, wait a minute. We might not need to because it does look like these guys are now free here. All right. And they have no alliance, uh, which means we could just declare war on them because I think we have a claim on them uh, already. If I'm not mistaken, maybe not. Yeah, it looks like we do not have a claim there. All right. Well, that's, that's unfortunate. All right. So I missed them doing this. I wish I had caught it right away. So what we're going to want to go ahead and do is do we have a we do. All right. So let's go ahead and build a spy network here get the damn claim so that we can declare war on these guys here because again we don't have we don't have the claim uh and i'm gonna try and uh, annex them i know we're we're really trying our best right now to uh cause a coalition against ourselves all right so let's go and bring these guys over here and merge them and then we'd want them to come on over here venice uh, has some rebellion problems so let's go and bring these guys over this away. Uh, we don't have any issues here with rebellions. Let's see how the best way to attack to, uh, to attack them would be. Let's see, we can attack from. Okay, we can attack from right here and not get a river penalty. So that's exactly what we'll do. And Luca keeps offering this peace offer. Again, we're going to decline the peace offers for as long as possible. And uh, just try and stay at you know try and stay from getting any more aggressive expansion while we burn off what we have so that hopefully we can get a lot in this treaty uh, that's the plan anyway and then me grabbing this is going to get even worse i already know uh so what is this one about so we can lo lose 10 prestige uh, and then we get a venetian catholic statesman will join our court and he'll be 50 percent cheaper uh do we still have i think we already have a, a 50 percent cheaper guy don't we no we do not uh, we do not. All right, so we'd probably want to get him then, uh, just to save a bit of money. Because I don't think this is... Yeah, he's not the... Oh, no, he is cheaper. Okay, never mind. We already have the 50% cheaper guy. I was thinking that was pretty cheap for a level 3, because that's about what a level 2 cost. Uh, and also, I wanted to deal with something over there real quick. I'm glad we, we looked at this. Uh, so, we also have the ability to instead say he serves us better as a local leader of the Venetian subjects. Uh, and then the Venetia area will have the influential power holder for the next 10 years, which gives us some very nice bonuses. And I think that's probably a good thing to do. So we'll get that. As far as money goes, we're currently at 9.04. And the reason why we're looking at that is because one thing I had completely forgot about, we used this in our British series uh, several times, and, and I just forgot about it. It is an, a little bit newer feature as far as, like, uh, since I was playing the game a lot. 
uh, but it's definitely not a new feature overall. And this allows you to increase their ability beyond the plus three. So I think you go, go all the way up to plus five, I think, I believe, if you spend a bit of money. So that'd be one way, way to spend some of our money, though. I was saving up for something. I think I was saving up to get our first uh, uh, manufacturing, which we need 484. I was going to build that in our capital there. Uh, it does get us a, a good chunk of money. There are other ways to get money, though. I, I want to say that we could get 0.35 from the much cheaper workshop. So what we could do instead of doing that is to go ahead and improve the skill of like this guy here. Although, really what we need, well, I guess we it's fine. Uh, we could always improve his ability or we can improve uh, this guy's, uh, which give us plus four here for fairly cheap because he is the 50% off guy. I believe he's the only guy we have this 50% off right now. So I suppose it would make sense to increase his ability despite the fact that he's a Dippo guy because remember, we're still trying to get those trade ideas, uh, the group uh, completed. So you know what? That's what we'll do. Let's increase his ability here. Get a little bit more there, and plus it's only gonna be 858, which is not bad price for a level four guy. Uh, and then we're also going to go ahead and uh, get that building going. Uh, we'll get the workshop here for a good little chunk of money, man. All right, excellent. So again, we just need to get this up to 25 here, and then we'll be able to uh, declare war on them. And it should be, again, a very, very easy conflict, as you'd expect, against a little one minor, one province minor power here. What I'm worried about, and the reason why I want to get involved quickly, is I'm worried about them joining the Empire. Uh, so I really don't want that to happen, because then Austria would support them. Uh, and we can either get 10 uh, Papal Influence or Prestige, which we're already in a pretty good uh, state there. So let's get the Papal Influence. That'll also allow us to now get something here. We could do uh, taxes for a bit more money. Do we have inflation? Let's just take a look. We do have a little bit of inflation here, so we could get uh, that take down a bit. I don't. I mean, I don't know how much that costs us overall. If, if that's better than a 10% tax bonus, or excuse me, 15% tax bonus for 20 years, probably not. Yeah, probably not. We don't really take loans. We're trying to avoid to take loans if we can. We're gonna just get the one plus mercantilism, uh, which would be nice as well. Okay, this is what we're going to do. Let's go ahead and do the uh, one plus mercantilism so we can build that up because we're not in a great spot there. Uh, I thought we would have had a little bit higher by now. Uh, we're currently at 13%. That's it. Again, that mercantilism is super useful for getting trade power. All right, we have exiles in Lithuania. How dare they? Oh, no. Uh, peace offers, of course, which will just decline. We're trying to get it so that we can annex these guys without and let's just make we can't peace with them because we yeah we don't have an open diplomat uh, but without france uh going uh into a coalition what we could do is get rid of the yeah we'll do that here stop building the spy network here so that we have a, di a diplomat available two of a kind uh so this is regarding our queen consort uh so we can say she has a point we shall invite her acquaintance to stay We'll gain a level three commander, which gives us a plus five percent discipline, and he's cheaper. So very good deal, and that's probably what we want to do. Uh, or we can say that our current grand uh, captain will work even harder, and he'll get the fifty mil power, military power. So let's do this one. I like that discipline. Uh, hopefully this doesn't cause us money trouble. Probably shouldn't, it, uh, because remember this guy is saving us a bit of money. Uh, so let's go ahead and get, uh, and she's a, it's a lady too. Uh, you can see that it's a lady because the uh, female advisors have the kind of silver. Uh, you know, outline here, or border, I should say. So I'm sure that event explained that to us. Uh, she's very young, so we'll have her for a long time, which is nice, and again, she's cheap. So let's go ahead and hire her. Uh, so now I'm wishing that we had uh, spent that money to tick our military advisor up since she's cheap now. She's the 50% off. So we'll get some good military power going. That's always nice to have. And plus we have more discipline too. Uh, meaning that we'll do more casualties and, and sl take slightly less casualties. Uh, so, hurtful trade policies. So, we've had this event before. And this will result in them gaining influence. And that is quite a bit of influence. We'll be at 45, almost at 50% now. But yeah, we're going to go into this one. 
Uh, are we still, we're still paying for our military, so we could always stop paying for them. We could also drill. I don't think we're doing that yet. Yeah, let's go ahead and drill. We will go ahead and drain, drill these guys. I said drain them. We're gonna drain them. We're gonna go ahead and drill these guys. Oh, our finest infantry thing expired. Damn it. So we got more discipline just to lose some discipline. Now we'll drill these guys so that we can declare war here. Let's take a look at Luca and see if annexing them is, is gonna be uh, possible without France joining. No. So France is still going to join the coalition, unfortunately. We haven't burnt off enough aggressive expansion with them just yet. Uh, what we need to do is improve relations with France because uh, they really hate us. So yeah, we could do that because we really don't have that much aggressive expansion with them. So this is what we're gonna do. Let's go ahead and improve relations with them just until we're ready to declare war here, until we got this up to 25, which will be uh, several more months. And just keep on declining these uh, until, again, until we get that, that notification that says that if we decline, then we get penalties. And I don't remember what that was tied to exactly, uh, but yeah, that's that's one of the features uh, that the game has. And after a certain time, if you don't accept peace, uh, I, I, maybe it's if they offer a certain kind of peace, I'm not entirely sure. So we got the national trade policy, plus 10% trade efficiency, and what's really nice here is that this is also going to give us the plus 10% global trade power. So we'll knock that out, so overall going to be making a lot more money now. Uh, from our trade. Uh, currently right now you can see we have 45% of the trade power there. We did. Now we have 57%, 66% of the trade power there. So we are earning a lot of money from trade, guys. Quite a bit of money. Venice also is broken. Uh, the rebels broke them. And so yeah, now we're earning 7.92. Uh, so our economy is just booming right now. We're doing fantastically well. Let's keep on turning those down. And stop drilling these guys, get them ready for the conflict, so we're just about ready. Oh, wait a minute, actually it's 30, isn't it? I keep forgetting that it's not 25. I don't know, I'm so set on the damn 25 here. So let me just take a look and see how much it would be for them. Uh, fabricate claim, okay, it's only 20 now. All right, because that's right, they're not in the uh, empire, and the empire's 30. Okay, so we can do it. Uh, so let's go ahead and get the claim here. And since it's only 2,000 men, we don't even have to build up our manpower any higher, or excuse me, our morale any higher. We can just go ahead and clear war as soon as we have an available diplomat, uh, which, oh, I'm still building the spy network. My bad, guys. Well, we do have to do a siege there, so we could keep that going and then just instead pull back our diplomat here. That'll give us free diplomat. All right, so let's go ahead and declare war on them. Nobody's going to come support us. Not necessary, nobody's gonna support them either. Let's go ahead and get that done and then get them defeated. Again, they, they do not have a lot of troops, so yeah, it's a very easy conflict. We can go and uh, split these troops up, which I'm probably just going to do from doing my own here. I'm trying to see. Okay, so yeah, this is going to be a very, very quick conflict. We have far more troops than we needed. Let's just. How much troops would we lose from attrition? We already have the breach here. We have, you know, overwhelming force. Let's just go ahead uh, and do the, the assault. Hurry up and get these guys defeated. Oh, maybe not. Looks like we did not win that. Okay, well, that's all right. Let's have to wait till our morale goes back up and do it again. Uh, ended up being a lot costlier than expected, though. Uh, I really thought we'd be able to take that. Uh, apparently not. Uh, so let's go and change these guys out here. Uh, let's just take out... Uh, again, we want to leave just a few thousand men here. Don't need much. And take these cav units out, and then just some of the infantry here. And get them up to, what are we at? 15,000 here, so we can pull a bit more out. There we go. It's kind of just reduce it a little bit, the overall attrition that we're getting there. Uh, and then still sending these damn peace officers, uh, peace officers offers that we are not interested in doing. All right, so siege is done, excellent. Uh, I probably didn't even need to assault that. So let's see how much A we get from trying to annex them. Not much, not much at all. Uh, that's actually not bad. All right, so yeah, we'll get, we'll do it with them. And uh, we don't need to do anything else. We can just go ahead and get some money, I suppose. Get a little bit of money there. All right, it's gonna end that. Very easy 
conflict here. I'm gonna make that in the core and got uh, finally got that province knocked out. I was kind of worried about that. So that does mean that we can do a royal marriage with with them. Oh, we don't need diplomats. Uh, so yeah, we'll go ahead and send a royal marriage off. Uh, I was hesitant to do that because I thought we'd have to go to conflict. Uh, I, I figured we'd end up going into conflict with them eventually because of this province here, but now that's not the case. Uh, we'd have to fight Austria to even get over here if we wanted to expand that way, which right now I'm really more concerned about expanding in Italy. Now, we do have some noble rebel issues. We're actually trying to siege that province down of ours, so that's a problem. We're going to have to go fight them. We're going to have to send two armies to fight them as well. All right, uh, so how do we want to do this? Do we want to attack them? I mean, I guess we're going to have to, aren't we? Because, uh, yeah, if they siege that down, that's going to cause us some issues. We could also just seek peace with them. Uh, but, again, I've been trying to uh, wait till we can get more stuff. So, yeah, we're not going to do that. What does that have to lose the men, guys? So, let's see where we can attack safely from without getting any uh, penalties here. And it looks like it is... I know that... Okay, this one right here and that one right there. Okay, so it's this. These two provinces. That's the direction we need to go from. All right, so let's go ahead and have these guys move over here, and then we'll uh, do an attack. Oh, here we go. This is it. The call for peace. That's what it is. So you get a call for peace here, and then you start getting the monthly war exhaustion, which will really start adding up uh, after a certain amount of time. Though you can see that because of our optimism, I had mentioned in the last episode that I wasn't entirely sure what that was from, and I completely forgot that we had gotten this from the innovative... Where is it at? Right there. So that's where we got that from. And so because of that, that does mean that we're actually not even gaining it. However, I do think this might go up, though, uh, and get higher. But yeah, as of right now, we're not. Uh, so we don't have to worry about the war exhaustion just yet. Uh, but again, this could end up changing here and getting, yeah, you can see it's getting more and more expensive each month. So eventually, guys, we are going to have to... to, to uh, in this conflict uh probably sooner rather than later might even just let them deal with their own damn rebellion here yeah we'll just see what we can get uh we might not be able to get anywhere near as much as i wanted the problem here again is luca's so damn expensive uh we could also just pull luca out of it just because of how expensive they are because i really do not want france in a uh yeah, I think that would just be really, really bad uh, if they were to join the coalition. So we could instead just make peace with Naples here. And we could we could get quite a bit. We can get three provinces uh, instead of just getting the one. Again, the fact that they are in the Empire, I think, is what's causing so many issues there. And we did not make them a belligerent, so that's another issue. Uh, so if we did it this way, France would not join. And we'd get all three of these. Could we even go for more if we wanted to? Just taking a look here. Again, without France joining. That's the main concern I have, is I don't want... Well, that's going to result in 70, so you know that France is going to join with that one. That one's kind of expensive. Yeah, so we could actually do this here and get four provinces instead of one, which would be more... Uh, certainly a lot more development in our hands. And this would not result in France joining. It's just a bunch of little countries. Uh, yeah, nobody really worry about. Varia is probably the strongest of all those. Uh, of course, Naples would be in that coalition, so we wouldn't be able to fight them until we burned off some of that aggressive expansion. We're going to have to do that any damn way, though, guys. Uh, so, yeah, I think that might be the best uh, way to go here. And the reason why... In okay, in Kona, we actually have a claim there. But, yeah, it's still... It's just too expensive. So, yeah, we'll go for these four here. And then the war score is still, that's only 51, so we have the ability to do some different stuff here. Uh, let's see what we want to do. So we could uh, force them to end the rivalry with us. We don't want them to do that. We could force them to end the alliance with Luca, but we don't actually want to do that either, because when we declare war next time, I'd like to bring Luca in. Maybe this time we can get them in the peace treaty. Uh, we could force them to give up claims. Again, I don't really see any reason to do that, because Naples isn't going to exist for much longer, in my opinion. Uh, so we'll just do the war reparations and then the transfer trade power. And then we'll get as much money as we can get from them. Well, it looks like we can still get more, so yeah, we'll keep on doing it until they say no. Alright, so this is what we're going to do here, guys. Uh, I think this is a great peace treaty here. Going to get some good stuff. So I'm send off that demand in the war and uh, get our troops out of here now. 
no longer necessary to have them over here. Uh, so as far as the rebels and where we need to defend against, looks like this is the highest amount. Uh, let's go ahead and get all these cored or try, try to core them. Looks like we're not going to have. Oh, well, we might have enough. There we go. All right, excellent. All right, so we will send our main guy, Francesco Sforza, over to here, our king. And then this guy will go, I don't know where the other highest location is. Let's just take a look here. Looks like Urbino, or are they all pretty much equal here? Yeah, it looks like they're all about equal. All right, so we'll just send them right there then. All right, fantastic. So that war went very, very nice. Oh, wait a minute, I never did. I don't know, we ended this. Hmm. Okay, is this just not uh, gone yet? We gotta wait for the month. Yeah, there we go. All right, so we lost the Italian Wars and the Treaty of Tordesia has happened. Again, that was a, a pample, stemmed from a pample bull about the splitting of the world between Portugal and Spain. I think we talked about it a bit more in that England series, so I won't go over it again, like the specifics, but that was also under Alexander the Sixth, And he was from Spain we got the Sickness of King event here. Uh, let's see what we want to do. Okay, so it's who we want to delegate the power to. Uh, either give more power to the nobles, and that would result in us losing money. Uh, and yeah, I don't really want the monthly autonomy change, so I think that's what we'll have to go with. And that does make the nobles more loyal, which the burgers are already pretty loyal to us, so we'll do it that way. And then what we'll probably want to go ahead and do here, uh, we have so much loyalty, this would be a great time to snatch some land uh, yeah, because I think that's the main thing that it does is it takes 20 loyalty from everybody. Now, as long as it doesn't go below 30, then I don't think you have any issues. Uh, but it does seem that the clergy would go below 30. Hmm. Okay. Uh, then what we'd want to do... Could do something here again. I'm kind of not wanting to mess with this until I know where our max absolutism is. Like, how much is this going to affect us? Because uh, I don't know because you can't see the max absolutism. Now again, most of these I'm not really interested in doing. However, there's a couple that I would like to do and that's the ones that give you more power. That's always nice to have. I mean, money again, as you, I said this early in the series, money is so easy to get in this game so I don't really concern myself too much with it. Power, on the other hand, something that's a little bit harder to get. So we could do this one, the religious state. This is actually takes their loyalty. That's interesting. Yeah, they end up having less loyalty. But yeah, I could see us doing these ones for the power, especially the admin power one, uh, because they use that for so much stuff. So yeah, I can see doing that one. Uh, but again, we do need, because uh, I think we give them some crown lands. Yeah, we do need to have at least 40% crown lands to be able to do that. So yeah, I'm trying to see some crown lands here. Uh, I guess we'll just, because I don't see any way to get their, their loyalty up just yet. I guess we could summon the diet. Yeah, that's what we'll do, summon the diet. And then that will give them just enough loyalty. There we go. We haven't done this in a little while anyways. So let's see what their proposals are. Uh, so the clergy wants us to get base tax in Como up by up to six, which I think it's at four. So we'd have to take it up twice. Uh, and that, that wouldn't be too expensive, I suppose. I suppose we could even do it now. But again, you're you're trading you know, power in for loyalty and, and prestige. I don't really think that's worth it. And we can vassalize Venice for the nobles. Uh, gain loyalty and one plus diplomatic reputation. I suppose vassalizing them would be the best option uh, rather than annexing them uh, straight up when we declare war on them simply because uh, they have that, that fleet that would be helpful to have under our control. Or we could do this one where we need 65% trade power in Venice. How close are we to getting that? We're at 45%. We're probably not going to get that. Yeah, I do not expect to get that anytime soon. So you know what? We'll do the noble one. And we do have to complete it within the next 20 years. So we'll have to make a priority. Uh, I've probably declaring war on the Venetians. Uh, the, the, they'll be the next one uh, that we go to war with, I guess. Uh, just seeing who their allies are. and Okay, so we'd have to fight the Pope. Now, if we wanted to become Italy, which we can actually do as soon as we get Rome, we're going to have to fight the Pope anyway. We have to get control of Rome. And that does have many issues that are caused by it. But just to show you guys where we're at on forming the Italian nation, that's all we need to do is get prov in the province of Rome. And, and we have to make it into a core. And then we can become Italy, which would be awesome. Uh, so we have to fight them eventually anyways. 
So yeah, I guess we'll uh, go to war with them next after we burn off some of this aggressive expansion that we got. Uh, so let's uh, do what I was going to do here. Before we keep this plan, we need to seize some land. And this will result in all these states losing 20 loyalty. And this is a rare occasion where we're actually able to do that. Uh, and this would give us only 5% more land. That is not a lot. Not a lot of land, guys. Okay, um, we did get, oh, okay, so we got a new uh, trait, the free, think free thinker for his last one. I'll make those ideas a bit cheaper. That's excellent. Uh, our next one is going to be a total of 350. I mean, we're getting them pretty cheap right now. And did he just die? What the fuck, man? He was so young. How did he just die? Oh, that sucks. Really? He wasn't even that old. Yeah, that's a, that's a real shame, guys. Now, luckily, we do have a decent queen consort. We're going to have that negative 10% construction cost now. We'll see what else she gets here, though. She probably, you know, she will not rule for 10 years, so we'll never see that, that next personality trait. Uh, she, again, she's pretty good. Uh, she's not bad at all. Low admin power, unfortunately. So we'd want to probably change up our national focus as soon as we can. Uh, we probably want to change the admin. So, well, yeah, I guess our air is not all that great in military or admin. Anyways, we can't change it until 1529, which will be next year. Uh, yeah, that really sucks, guys. That's a real shame that Sforza did not... Francesco Sforza just didn't last very long for us. I feel like we kind of got ripped off there. Uh, we don't have any rebel problems just yet. Let's go ahead and do some drilling. Oh, we don't have a leader. That's right. Sforza was our leader. We're going to need to recruit one. A little bit of admin power. Uh, and our leader's going to keep getting better and better because of all those modifiers that we have that are improving them. Uh, so we're getting four fire, three shock. Uh, two siege and, and uh, two excuse me two siege and, and two maneuver uh, so yeah we're getting pretty good leaders here uh, we also have decent army traditions so that's helping let's go and get these guys drilling and get the drill back up since that did get ticked down a bit since we're paying for the military might as well uh, and yeah we don't have any rebel problems just yet uh, so we got a fortification expert uh, this is a we'll say it's of the most importance we do have the money for that uh, but yeah, so far, our things have been going great for us. Uh, we, we're we building this third army up, so we need to, to continue doing that. Uh, how much room do we have left? We still have quite a bit of room here. Uh, I remember we lost some troops here, unfortunately. That's the reason why that's a lot lower than it would be. And so we can get four more units here. Uh, that's currently three. That'll get up to 9,000. How many uh, cab do they have right now? I can't even see them. Looks like they only have one cab unit, uh, so we'll give them one more, and then some infantry. All right, fantastic. So we'll use that money for it. We'll take a look and see if we can get any more ships as well. Uh, looks like we're just one over the cap now, which, by the way, I forgot that we had gotten some ships here. Uh, yeah, look at this. We got a few ships. So let's go ahead and change this up, because we actually have uh, some. These are the ones that we had gotten when we annexed them. And I, I just never messed with them. So let's move them over that way. And then these ships here, I think, would move to, you know, protect trade. I don't want to turn that on. Uh, to protect trade here in Venice. We haven't put many ships there just yet. And you can see there's not really getting us much profit, though. Yeah, we're, we're really not getting any profit because the maintenance is actually higher than what we're getting there. That's a real shame, man. Get, would get a lot more money if we patrolled Alexandria, though. It's interesting that we're not getting anything from Venice. Yeah, so little money there. I guess its trade power just isn't worth as much. Huh. Yeah, we get 16 trade power from Genoa, though. Okay, I see. I think that, that, yeah, we're just not getting enough trade power there. Yeah, I think this is probably not, not worth it. So instead, we'll go to Alexandria, because it looks like that would be the biggest profit. And then we'll also move... The one ship that is already patrolling here, we'll move them to instead go to Alexandria. And just try and take all the wealth from Alexandria and bring it into our our uh, core trade area, our main trade area here. So yeah, you can see we're taking quite a bit of money through here. And once that ship gets over there, it should bring a bit more Okay, uh, so I forgot about mothballing our ships, or excuse me, our forts. And I always click on that to do it. We need to do that in here. This could really cut down some of our 
Money problems. Again, we don't really have money troubles. We'll get all these guys go over in here. We'll maybe move this army as well to somewhere that might be having a rebellion issue. Uh, see who we got here. Oh, so this is actually a papal rebellion chance there. Okay. See where the best place to, to move these guys would be. Probably right there. Just try and tick down their uh, overall unrest. Am I trying to avoid any rebellions here? The rebellions are getting kind of large now. Uh, again, I don't really want to use the military power, but we actually have an abundance of military power. Uh, and we have quarter territory. Should get all these cords soon. And yeah, just everything is going very, very well uh, in this campaign overall. We really haven't had any issues. We've been able to avoid most, you know, uh, conflicts, any difficult ones. I mean, it's been it's been pretty easy overall. So we'll go ahead and do that. Uh, get him going there, and I suppose go ahead and start working on uh, Venice. Though I know that we do have a claim here. I guess we'll just wait. Since we already have a claim. So in that case, let's just put one over here towards uh, outrage countries and, and build it up there. Though one thing somebody told me is that having... Okay, so we got that done. Those cores done. And that means that we can now make this into a state here. And sorry about the loud vehicles, guys. Uh, so let's go ahead and do that. Um, this is most likely going to be profitable. And we'll try and core... How many can we core? Only one of them right now. Is that the only one we needed to core? Yeah, because I think we weren't done uh, doing the... There, there's two different cores. You have like the territory core and then you have the state core. Uh, so you do have to core things twice when it's not in the state. You gotta core it again once it is... Once you've made it into a state. Uh, we're gonna recall that diplomat. Uh, but that coring uh, is instantaneous. You don't have to wait for it. And we're gonna tell them no. But anyways, one thing someone told me is that the uh, the spy networks have the benefit of we have a, if a country is uh, ahead of you in tech uh, and you have uh, a bit of uh, you know spy network built up there, they don't actually decrease your your tech cost. Uh, so that would be okay, okay. We can make this into a state too, so we will. Uh, I don't know what our governing capacity is. We should probably take a look at that. Uh, we got a lot. Okay, so we're good to go. We don't have to worry about that. Uh, so yeah, maybe that's something we might want to do if we want to look at uh, technology. I don't know if I have that down here. It looks like that is a no. We just have the institutions. Uh, so we'd want to look at that. I'm not entirely sure where that's at. You'd assume maybe economy? Yeah. So we took a look at technology. There might not be anybody ahead of us on technology. Because we are... Uh, yeah, pretty far ahead, and we were 11, 10, 11. I don't think anybody else is actually ahead of us. I think we are the most techno technologically advanced country in the world, actually. We could get a little bonus here from having the 11 Diplo tech, but yeah, I don't think it's worth it. Okay, uh, I didn't know we were doing so well in technology, but we've been doing great in power. We've had a, you know, obviously we had Francesco Forza, who was a good ruler, and before that we had a good ruler as well. Uh, yeah, we've actually had some good rulers, a string of them. Uh, it kind of sucks we're about to have a, a crappy one uh, soon. I almost don't want him to take over. We'll just leave her as the, the queen. Uh, we can change this up here, and I think we will just go ahead and remove it. Because we do need the Diplo and Admin power now more than we need military power. Uh, so they want military access. We're going to tell them no. And good God, guys, the, the vehicles and the sirens going on right now. Uh, again, it's just one of those times. Uh, it's just that time of day, man, uh, where it's... Yeah, we're coming home from work, and, and there's been a lot of sirens lately, guys. Here in uh, where we live, we live in Colorado Springs, if you didn't know, uh, there has been uh, protesting. Uh, there has been a little bit of looting downtown, but not much. It hasn't been, like, in the big cities. Uh, it's not as bad as it is in Denver. You know, I went up to Denver uh, not that long ago, and good God, man. The protests were far larger uh, than the protests here, uh, much, much larger. Uh, the, all downtown was like so difficult uh, to get through because of the, the traffic. Uh, let's go and get this extra merchant. That'll be really nice to have. Uh, and then we are now only two away from getting the stability cost modifier reduction here. And then of course, once we get these two, which uh, would then get us that, we'd get the trade steering and the caravan power. That has to do with the uh, you know your trade power in inland trade nodes. And then we'd also get the finisher here, which is one more merchant. Uh, so with that extra merchant, let's see where we'd like to place him. 
where'd be the best location? We might want to speed this up to, to speed five as well, so we can make a little bit of progress here. Uh, as we're trying to burn off that aggressive expansion that we just earned, which we earned a lot of it, so it's going to take a little while to burn that off. Uh, so we've already got a merchant here. Let's see where we might want to send more trade from. Uh, just looking at where has the most value right now. And we're going to have like a thousand cuts in this damn video, man. The, the, whatever's going on outside, I don't know what's going on, but there's been like six cop cars that have passed uh, just while recording this damn video. And they're all doing it one by one, of course. They didn't all come at the same time. Uh, so I think this would be the best location for us to send a merchant to. Uh, just looking at other locations, there's a little bit of money to be had here, but not much. Uh, over here, you know, again, there's money to be had, but I don't feel like it's as much, because you see that they're actually sending 4.95 up to this trade node. Uh, so we are sending some of it to us through here. I think it's better just send it directly up to here, since we don't really have much trade. We don't have any trade power here, hardly. We got 2% trade power right there. Uh, so... Yeah, I think this would be the best way to do it. Let's go and send our merchant over here. Uh, and we will transfer trade power with our merchant here. It'll take up seven days. Uh, and then we can also talk about the trading policy. So the, the one it sets at is setting maximum profit, which gives you the plus 5% trade node power. However, there are other options if you want to do different stuff here, like get your spy network construction up with the hostile trading. Uh, you can't do this one here, the improved inland routes, because it has to be an inland one. Uh, there's the established communications, which improves relations, plus 15% there. I'll let you do that a little bit faster. And then there's the uh, propagate religion, which is only for Muslims. So I just want to show what that was, because I don't think I've done that yet. Uh, so yeah, we should have uh, more money going this way once the month flips over. Right now we have 0.88. We'll see how much that changes. And then we have the uh, the triangle trade event here. It's going to change the cost of some stuff. Yeah, look at that. So much more money now uh, coming over to us here. Trying to make those uh, trade nodes a bit more uh, uh, richer. And now trade has officially become our most profitable form of business. That's where I'm making the most income from. Uh, and a merchant just went bankrupt. Okay. Uh, so we lose two, 10 trade power in Ragusa. That's quite a bit. Uh, or we can just do this one. We'll just do that one. It's not that much money. Not that much power. Okay. So... Uh, Things are going very, very well so far uh, in the campaign. And uh, I said that uh, before, I'm just uh, surprised with just how well things have been going. Uh, it's just been relatively easy. Like we haven't really found ourselves at conflict with the large powers yet. Uh, it's just quite a bit different from that English series. And you know, we're gonna go all the way up to speed five here. Uh, we got the seal of confession. Uh, so we can say their sins may be of interest even if we can't absolve them. I'm gonna get the 25 spy network at Naples. Uh, or we can say uh, unthinkable. She should inform the priest that they can't and they can't be heard. So we'll just get the uh, ten diplomatic power. We'll just do that. We don't really need the, uh, the spy network there in in Naples because they are. I don't know if they're going to be our next target. Uh, could declare one of them. I think Venice would probably be better though. I think we have a mission regarding that too. We should take a look at that. Uh, so there's a new Holy Roman Empire emperor. Excuse me. Uh, so it's still going to be Austria. They do have just about everybody uh, voting for them, with the exception of Bohemia. He's voting for the Hungarians uh, to be the emperor. All right, and we also have a royal marriage offer here, which we'll accept. And we are almost near our maximum uh, military power, so we're going to want to spend that. Uh, so let's go and do that now. Uh, we're going to go ahead and spend a little bit here to get the... Uh, base manpower up. I think it's just about the 40 development there, so not too shabby. Uh, just take a look and see where else we might want to build up our manpower. Like here, we don't really have very much manpower here. So we can go ahead and build that up. Although, you're not really getting... Yeah, I mean, this is 109. You're not getting much for your military power. We should probably go with places that are a bit cheaper. Uh, you know, which would be places that we haven't already done it in. So what we need to do... I need to show you guys the missions here because there's actually a mission regarding improving development in Lombardy. Uh, so right now our development in Lombardy is 116. If we get it up to 150, then we complete this mission, which will then give us the Silk and Como event. Uh, so I think that would probably change the uh, province's trade good to, to Silk, which it's currently cloth. Silk is worth a lot more. Uh, so I think that would actually be really, really beneficial so that's one that we would likely want to do. So we should probably just improve 
the uh, development just in this area here, guys. Uh, so yeah, we'll do that. Uh, so the other uh, missions here, uh, we have this one secure a rule, which is kind of hard to do, as you'll notice. Unrest has to be lower than one in all the provinces in those those areas. And uh, it looks like actually, is that all of Italy? Maybe all of Italy? Uh, I think those are the provinces that, that are being highlighted right now. I think those are the ones that where the unrest and the autonomy is not at the required level. And then plus you have uh, the other uh, requirements with the Papal States in France. So overall it's a, kind of a, a tough one to, to complete there. See other ones we haven't completed yet. Uh, we have the Fortify the Passes, which is of course building those forts in those locations. Maybe something we'll do a bit later. Uh, we don't own... We don't even own enough provinces to complete it, so I'm not worried about it right now. Uh, and then we got the uh, Conquer Tuscany, uh, which we still need to get Luca in our hands before we're able to complete that one. And then we have the Kingdom of Lombardy, uh, which we have to get Venice in our hands. So that's really what we should prioritize. Uh, so let's go ahead and get the development built up over here. We'll go ahead and build some manpower in some of these areas. Just kind of look at uh, where the manpower is a bit low and where the costs are, are low as well. Uh, so it's 50 there. I'm just kind of spread out the love a little bit. Uh, and just make sure we're doing this. Oh, we need to be doing it in Lombardy. Oops. I was thinking that this was Lombardy. This is the Po Valley. I could have swore that was highlighted. Let me just double check here, guys. On the uh, Develop Lombardy. Okay, it's these ones here. Oh, yeah, but they're in the Po Valley. I guess it doesn't have anything to do with the states then. Okay. It looks like it has to do with the culture. I got it. I understand now, guys. That's clear. All right, so let's go and take a look at the cost here and see where the best place to build uh, is going to be. This is probably the cheapest. And so that's what we're going to base it off of is the cheapest ones. All right, so that has built it up a bit. Uh, so as far as how much further we have to build it, we're at 120. Uh, we need to get to 150, so 30 more in development there. And then we'll be able to complete that mission. All right, so we now could summon another diet, but we have not completed the current agenda, which we only have till 1551. No, 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 that's how long we get that. Uh, we have to 1540, 1548. So not a long time, guys. Uh, I mean, it's, it's long enough. It should allow us to burn off the aggressive expansion here that we have. Uh, just taking a look at France, which again, they're the main ones I'm worried about. Negative 37 is what we're getting there on aggressive expansion. Uh, we get a nice prestige bonus there, so we'll take that. Uh, so we can say let it slide here, and then we gain some autonomy, and the nobility gains some land. Or we can say demand the land be returned, in which case it could be facing a small rebellion, which is what I suppose we'll take, that we'll just eat that. We didn't have the rebellion, so I assume that means that they're now disloyal. Yes, they are. Just by a bit. It's not too bad, but you'll notice that we are getting penalties all across the board here because of that. We'll just have to let it tick up naturally, I suppose. Okay, so a lot of things tra changing with uh, the cost of goods because of uh, the discovery of the Americas here. So, court painter available. We can hire him, uh, which would get us some stability. We'd lose some prestige, but uh, it does have a little cost there. I feel like that's worth it. Well... You're really only buying the, the stability since we already at max prestige here. But we'll take it. Uh, I'll pay some money for some stability because it does actually earn us more money. And yeah, we're earning fantastic levels of money right now. Uh, we get another artist and he'll be 50% cheaper. What we really need to do, because this might actually save us some money here, is if anybody is not cheaper here, the 50% cheaper, which I think is this guy here, then what we could do is hire him and then just like uh put the points into uh to make them better so yeah we could like hire this guy here and overall he'd end up being a lot cheaper once we kind of boosted him up here we wouldn't have to pay a whole 9.9 .9 here now the national arrest is pretty useful though uh because you know that is what i think is stopping us from having issues here though you'll notice we're actually doing pretty good yeah this is not bad none of these rebellions are going to happen anytime soon that might change though once we get rid of this guy. Uh, but again, we could save a lot of money if we did this. So this is what we're gonna do. Uh, let's go and get this cheaper guy. He's gonna increase the national tax modifier as well. Uh, I think he's the only cheap guy that we got yet. Let's go ahead and hire him. Very, very cheap. And then go ahead and just tick him up. 
And just like that, now he's level three. All right, excellent. We can also get the next trade, trade idea, uh, which we are very behind in tech, by the way. That should get us a lot of money. Yeah, we are starting to fall a little bit behind. Well, it's not too bad. It's not too bad, guys. And this one doesn't really do much any damn way. Yeah, let's see what this offer here is. Yeah, I can tell them no. Uh, so we should be making more money from trade now because we got that trade steering ability. Uh, so we should be getting a lot more money pumping into into Genoa. Yeah, Genoa is worth quite a bit now. Venice, on the other hand, not worth very much, guys. Uh, the amount of money that is staying here is is just not not a lot. Uh, and that's because we are you know taking all the trade that would be going here and pumping it into Genoa instead. Uh, so that's kind of what the issue there is. And that's also why I think it's not worth it sending uh, when we sent our light uh, trade ships there. Uh, our army has reached a new level of professionalism, so now we can refill garrisons, uh, which is the next little level here. Uh, and you see that this is the bonus that all of our armies is getting, or are getting, excuse me. So let's just take a look and see if we want to continue drilling. They're probably sitting at 100 now. Yeah, they are. So we can go ahead and stop drilling. I know these guys aren't drilled yet, but that's fine. Uh, so let's go ahead and stop drilling. And then what we're going to want to do is go ahead and, and stop paying for our military, I suppose. And that's going to save us a lot of money. Uh, we don't have any rebellions yet we got to worry about. So, yeah, let's just stop paying for them. Look how much money we're going to get, man. We're just going to be swimming in it. Yeah, so we're going to earn a ton of money. Uh, a lot of different stuff we could do here. Uh, let me just see if there's any buildings we want to get. Especially, with, like, manpower buildings. Uh, since we did just increase the uh, base manpower of several provinces. Yeah, we'll go here. Get that, and I suppose we could do another 500 right there. All right, excellent. Let's see if there's anything workshop-wise that we could get. Might earn a lot of money. Looks like that's a no. How about uh, the church? No, not really gonna get much there. Okay. So yeah, we are uh, again just doing very, very well. Uh, the rebellions you can see are, are now taking up a little bit more uh, because of us not having that negative two from our advisor. Okay, so these mercenary companies are no longer going to be available now because of this, and we won't get that Italian Wars modifier that we didn't use any damn way. I just haven't been using mercenaries. Uh, you know, when I look back on it, I, I feel like I should have did the uh, series a little bit differently. I should have focused on mercenaries a bit more, and uh, from there I could have... Uh, you know, really trying to get all the modifiers from, got different ideal groups, and just really focused on mercenaries so we could hire the mercenary companies. I should have did that with this series uh, and, and kind of just did things a bit different, maybe not not focused on our own military too much. Kind of regret doing that, but that's okay. It's fine. It's too late now. I'm not going to do it. Uh, now we've got a very good military with a lot of bonuses for them, and uh, we get their drill up, professionalism's high, so yeah, we probably won't be using mercenaries that much unless we absolutely have to. Uh, so we could go ahead and start... Um, Taking up the development here, uh, and just seeing how much this is gonna cost us here. I like, you know what? I really kind of like looking at it this way because we know, you know, where we want to do it based on the fact that it's we're trying to get the Lombard bonus. So again, I kind of feel like uh, we should just take it into here because it's the cheapest. And I know we have another one that's kind of cheap here as well. Take it into there. All right, just continue building up the development to try and get it up to that 150. Maybe build up the development here too. You know what, let's do that. Let's get the development built up there as well. Uh, how much longer until we're not so far ahead of tech that we actually might want to invest in it? I mean, as of right now, it's it'd be really, really expensive. 1,059, geez. Yeah, we are, we're still really ahead of, uh, ahead of time right now. Uh, complaints about a visual. So we're gonna lose stability or lose 10 legitimacy. We'll go with that. Legitimacy is getting a little bit lower though. Uh, because we're in a regency. Okay, I didn't realize that. And hold up. Now we have the new king. And our legitimacy is, is actually extremely low. Good God. That's because he had that average. Uh, so we would have a, a personal union. And there would be a succession war with the Hungarians and Bohemians. Okay. So we got some issues, guys. We've got some issues uh, right now. Uh, now that we have our, our king in charge, which means we're going to get a lot less... Uh, power overall, just one three one. That's pretty garbage. So yeah, we're in, we're getting a lot less. We're really gonna have to focus on the advisors a lot more, uh, which is fine because we do have the money to do so. Uh, so let's go ahead and uh, tick him up. Yeah, we'll tick him up, get him up to level four, 
And then we'll take her up next. Oh, wait a minute. You cannot do it if they're not. Okay, I see. Uh, they're not your, your culture. I think they got to be your culture and your religion uh, to be able to promote the advisor. So we won't be able to get any more military power than that. But I guess we've been swimming in military power for a while now, so it's not as big of an issue. Uh, and we still haven't done the embrace, the, the counter-reformation. I'm just going to say not be notified of that. I don't really see any reason to do so. You know, if we don't have any provinces we need to convert, it's just overall penalties, you know. Uh, but yeah, I think this is where we're going to end the episode. Made some good progress here, guys. Uh, we've burned off some of that aggressive expansion. Let's just take a look and see how far we've gotten. Uh, we have got them down to negative 31, so we still got a lot of work to do here to get that burn down a bit more. Uh, looks like they would actually be willing to ally with us, uh, which is interesting because I'm almost starting to consider flipping our support have a kind of diplomatic revolution so to speak and just switching over from supporting the, the Habsburgs in Austria to, to supporting the French I don't know guys I think it'd be interesting uh, kind of you know they're number one of the great powers too I guess that, that'd be one risk though is if we support them and then we help them they're already incredibly powerful uh, that might not be might not be good especially because of the fact that Austria is not even a great power yeah they're not even a great power anymore Interesting, even despite the fact he's the emperor. Now, we're number five on great powers, uh, so we're definitely climbing up there. Uh, but yeah, I think we're going to end the episode here. It's just one thing to consider, uh, because Austria has continued to cause us issues because we can't expand into the empire without them uh, threatening to declare war on us. Also, we could go ahead and use our 50 points here to do something. I mean, we're earning so much money, I kind of just want to do the mercantilism. I think that might be for the best. Though, let me just take a look and see how high our inflation is. I know it's been going up some. Uh, I mean, it's 1% extra cost on everything. Uh, so that could actually save us uh, a bit of money uh, by ticking that down some. Uh, so that'd be one option. Uh, but I, th I think we'll wait to do that. Let's just do uh, something else instead. And right, let's continue doing the mercantilism, try and ticking that up. Again, that gets us more trade power overall, helps us uh, control our uh, trade nodes a bit more. So hope you guys did enjoy the episode. We're going to end it here. Remember, there will not be a video on Sunday. Uh, and uh, probably won't be a video on Monday. If there is one, then it would be really late. Uh, so we're going to end it here. And it would also be a shorter video. I should say that as well. It would be a short, later episode on Monday if we had one at all. So we're going to go ahead and end it here. We're just uh, swimming in money. Uh, and things are just going uh, fantastically well so far. Just you know, we, we do have a crappy ruler now. That's one thing. Uh, to consider and, and he's really bad uh, he is not great at, especially with the the two most important uh, skills here are very low so that's unfortunate um, but is what it is we'll just have to roll with it hope you guys did enjoy the episode if you did make sure you leave a like on the video subscribe to our channel hit that notification bell and leave a comment i hope to see you on that next episode and thanks for watching